in detail or in short we'll watch videos and try to discuss them on the topic kaplan turbine so i'll repeat we have finished the pelton turbine the pelton wheel francis in the middle you it's not there in syllabus but from the competitive exams point of view you can always study that francis turbine and now we are studying the kaplan turbine okay so we'll see one video first so here they are showing a reservoir and this is a building where beneath we have turbine so it's a hydro power station here you can see a kaplan turbine so i'll pause here for a bit so there are two parts of uh, this here so this is the actual kaplan turbine design so you will see we we'll zoom it and we'll see it later so there are the guide vents so the water from this reservoir so this is upstream and this side is downstream so water from this will come into this and these are the guide plates so the guide vents so this will control the flow and from here the water will come downwards actually this is axis of this turbine and due to this reaction this blade will rotate and the water will fall down now from here it will go towards the downstream and this is the rotor the shaft and the that that is the where our electricity will be generated so this is the mechanical part we are not interested so we are only interested up to here now if you compare this with the pelton wheel you must have must have observed that pelton wheel was working under atmospheric pressure everything was open to the sky but here can you see any part of this open to sky no. or it's open to atmospheric pressure no so right from here to outside here everything is under water pressure this you have to keep into account okay that's why we called it a reaction turbine so here we have reactions plus some pressure okay so we'll move on with the video as you can see the guide vents are open now so water is falling down so by that reaction this uh, is moving and that's why the shaft moved so this is a in zoom view of kaplan turbine so you can see these are the guide vents on the top and even these vanes the blades can also move you can you see sear there is a, a mechanism which allows to move these vanes so this is some the mechanical part of this we are not interested see these are the guide vents how they control the flow of water so there is a mechanism here which can control the movement of the guide vents so here the water will be allowed to enter i'll repeat in the in the in the pelton wheel if you remember we had a nozzle right to control the flow in here we have this guide blades to control the flow So just you can imagine you are the water particle and how you'll come through the guide vents, you'll fall on these vanes of the Kaplan turbine and you'll go down. So if you remember, we used this type of turbine for lower heads of dam. That's why you saw there was no high reservoir. dam for this type of turbine for pelton we had a high head dams but whereas in kaplan we have a small head dams relatively we we'll move on to the next video this is a video prepared by a 
मैकेनिकल इंजीनियर Hello students today we will learn that what is a Kaplan turbine and how it works and also we will derive some mathematical expression in regards of Kaplan turbine Kaplan turbine is an hydraulic turbine which is used for converting the hydro hydraulic energy of water into rotational power over some shaft that rotational power in turn is used for uh, driving a generator set to develop electrical power it is like this now over here you can see the entire system diagram schematic diagram of entire system of kaplan turbine suppose this is a river and the flow of water is constrained by the help of some dam so it is having some head head of water so if the water passes through the pan stock and ultimately reaches this is the actual kaplan turbine this is an indicative diagram i will uh, tell you the detailed one also so when water goes inside so the first part where the water reaches uh, uh, from after leaving the pan stock is the uh, casing okay so first of all water reaches the casing then it reaches the guide mechanism okay so ultimately after passing through the guide me mechanism water goes to the center and from the center it falls in downward direction so what happens it falls in the draft tube so when it falls downward in downward direction then there is a runner through which the water rushes so when water rushes through the runner then it starts rotating the runner this is how the hydraulic energy of water is converted into rotational energy over the shaft of kaplan turbine runner so once again this is a river with the uh, water uh, flow is constrained by the help of a dam so water flows through the pan stock reaches the casing of kaplan turbine and after casing there are guide mechanism from the guide mechanism it water goes to the center from the center water moves in axially downward direction so it moves through a draft tube so in the draft tube over the topmost part there is a runner so when the water flows over the runner uh, runner veins then it starts rotating the runner this is how the rotation power is developed so one thing we can learn over here that is kaplan turbine is a reaction type of turbine reaction means actually it runs on the pressure energy of water so what happens the pressure uh, which is falling over the blade of this runner drives it to rotate in a corresponding direction this is how the power is developed over the runner second thing is that it is an axial flow machine means the flow of water to the runner is in axis is this is the axis of runner then flow of water is in the axis of the runner so therefore it is an axial flow machine now this is the kaplan turbine and this is the detailed diagram of this kaplan turbine you can see water coming from the pan stock first of all reaches the casing you can see water coming from the pan stock reaches the casing and there are guide blades mounted so what happens after casing the water passes through guide blades you can see so it makes the water to rotate inside the guide blade directs the water in a particular angle so that it develops a whirl in water you can see a rotational motion in water ultimately it reaches the center and it falls in downward direction axially downward direction so the cut section view of this turbine is over here you can see that from the casing uh, the water passes through the guide veins so it develops a rotational motion in water ultimately it falls in exit direction through a draft tube so just after leaving this casing section in downward direction over the center there is a runner so over here i am the i am having a picture of runner also you can see this is how the runner looks like runner is having a hub this is the hub the central part is the hub and the hub is containing the blades or veins with it you can see over here okay so in case this is the shaft and the radius of hub is r1 and radius of the runner is r2 okay so the average radius of runner would be r1 plus r2 by 2 this is what r is it is like this r1 is the radius of hub and r2 is the radius of the runner so we have to take the average radius of runner that is equal to r1 plus r2 by 2 so this is how when the water rushes through this runner then it starts rotating the runner in corresponding direction 
so the power is available over the shaft this is how the hydro hydraulic energy of water is converted into rotation power over the shaft now let's do some mathematical analysis in regards of this kaplan turbine see what happens that when water reaches the center then it is having a rotational motion because the guide vanes are directing the water to move like so it is like this but when it reaches the center then it starts falling in axial axially downward direction also so suppose that water is moving with tangential velocity vw since water is rotating over the center so it is also having a tangential velocity a rotating entity is always having a tangential velocity over its peripheral surface so suppose vw is the tangential velocity of water when it is rotating and going inside the center of this system suppose it is falling in downward direction with velocity vf therefore the vector and over the bottom what is there there is the runner so the velocity vector which is going to interact with the runner equals to vf is the velocity of water in axially downward direction and vw is the tangential velocity of water so vf plus vw that is equals to v is the velocity vector which is what going to interact with the blade of the kaplan turbine now what happens when the water leaves the blade then it is having no whirl component means when it leaves the blade then it is only having the axial velocity Inici means initially it is having vw that is the tangential component but finally uh, the water doesn't leave the blade in rotating fashion initially water is entering inside towards the blade water is entering inside in rotational fashion but finally when it leaves the blade it is only having the axial velocity there is no vw now initially with what angular momentum water is going to interact with the blade you know this thing that angular momentum is given by mbr where m is the mass of rotation this part here we can uh, we have already discussed here in the derivations and the formulae so we'll not go much in detail in this derivational part so our motive here in this lecture is to understand the uh, working in detail of the kaplan turbine entity and in principle w w to equals to going through this system So I hope it is clear. The also very important part in this Kaplan turbine is the draft tube. We'll have a separate derivation and few individual problems only on draft tube. So it's a very important concept here. What important here we have already discussed in the previous videos is the shape of this. Why it is increasing? can anyone explain or can anyone think of why the cross sectional area of draft tube is increasing as it comes downwards yeah because of the pressure energy so there is a kind of a negative pressure which is getting developed here so if you increase the cross sectional area what will happen if you consider the discharge equation q equals to av So if you take these two sections here and here, so here the area is more. How much is the velocity? Less. And if the area is less, velocity is more. So to decrease the velocity of the water coming down, we have increased the shape. So ultimately, it tries to cover up the negative pressure which is developed. Very good. Average discharge to because just we are saying that water is flowing between the annular space. in the exam from the exam point of view uh, you can draw this diagram if possible you can zoom out and show the hub okay but this item uh, this uh, figure is more than enough to explain in the exam of this draft hub out think through this so what is speed is we dip part of runner but uo is what U O equals to U O equals to the velocity of the tangential velocity of the tip of this runner. So the outermost radius is what? That is equals to R two. So R two into omega is what the tangential velocity of the extreme point of this runner in radial direction. Therefore, U O upon root two G H is what called as speed ratio. 
सो होप यू वुड हैव अंडरस्टूड द बेसिक्स ऑफ के प्लान टर्बाइन थैंक यू we go on to the third video here for kaplan are suitable for power extraction wind water energy kaplan turbines are suitable for power extraction wind water energy is available at low head and high flow rate which means they are suitable for operation wind water is stored in a big reservoir at a relatively low altitude in kaplan turbine flow is entered through a spiral casing decreasing area of casing make sure that flow is entered to the central portion almost at uniform velocity throughout the perimeter water after crossing the guide vanes passes over the runner finally it leaves through a draft tube most important part of kaplan turbine is its runner cross section of runner blade will have a curved shape when water flows over it it will induce a lift force due to airfoil effect tangential component of lift force will make the runner rotate this rotation is transferred to a generator for electricity production Kaplan turbines are axial flow machines where absolute velocity of flow is parallel to axis of turbine. Water is precisely made to pass through runner blades with help of a shroud. Power demand may fluctuate over time. A governing mechanism which controls position of guide vanes is used to control water flow rate. This can meet for varying power demand. Blades of Kaplan turbine are designed to operate under a wide range of operating conditions. A rotating blade experiences relative velocity of flow. The fundamental thing in blade design is relative velocity of fluid flow should be at optimum angle of attack at all cross sections. so here you can see the water enters in the tangential direction but when it leaves down or it exits it will exit in vertical direction in the axial direction of the turbine even though absolute velocity is axial relative velocity will be inclined depending upon blade velocity inclination of relative velocity increases as we move from root to tip due to increasing blade velocity there should be continuous twist in blade from root to tip so that at every cross section the angle of attack is optimum with varying flow condition relative velocity will change drastically kaplan turbine blades are adjustable When flow rate is high, relative velocity of flow will be more axial. So blade should pitch vertically. If flow rate is low, relative velocity of flow is more tangential. So blades are pitched in tangential direction. I would like to repeat here what uh, it is explained in the video. so the as we have we know that the blades can be adjusted so based on what uh, characteristics we should adjust the blade if the flow is low we can keep the orientation of the blade as it is shown in the figure and if the we have higher flow rate then we can put the blades as shown in the figure so it depends on the flow rates so you can adjust the blade if flow is more apart from controlling the flow rate guide vanes have got one more function they help in controlling swirl flow so here we can see the importance and the uses of guide vanes which are located on the top of the 
Kaplan turbine. If guide vanes were not present, the flow would be highly swirling in nature due to its tangential entry. Such a flow would reduce performance of turbine drastically due to its poor angle of attack. So guide vanes control swirl of flow for optimum angle of attack. Biggest challenge in design of Kaplan turbine is how to overcome problem of cavitation which causes material erosion and vibration. Cavitation is unavoidable in Kaplan turbine. Uh, so far I guess we have not discussed the cavitation right you must have seen in the previous videos but this concept is very important the cavitation part most probably we will discuss it in the next class in detail how the cavitation is and how it can affect your turbine so in the Pelton there was no question of cavitation because everything was open but in this case when it is everything in this is in submerged condition where the water pressure is acting and there will be variation from positive to negative pressures so there are chances of creation of cavitation you must have observed this in your life but i would give you a time to go and read more on cavitation so that we'll discuss in the next class okay so we'll continue with the video since in most of the regions pressure goes very low but damage due to cavitation can be reduced by using suitable blade material and use of anti-cavitation fin draft tube which transforms dynamic pressure to static pressure due to its increasing area also helps in reducing cavitation effect so we have discussed here the pelton uh, the kaplan turbine in the previous video we have discussed the pelton turbine I also told you there is one turbine in the middle which is Francis turbine. So in the next videos we will see the differences between these three turbines. So as an engineer when you will join any such industry which where you are able to choose a turbine then you this knowledge is very important to you. How to solve it the efficiencies it's all there. It's all there in the books. You can always go and find it. But choosing the right type of turbine and de proper design of it is very, very important. It's it's not an easy job. So in this case, your knowledge and the application-oriented mind is very important. So we'll f see a few videos of the comparison of these turbines. Video today about hydroelectric turbines. I'm going to show you guys and girls the three main types of turbine and also I'm going to tell you about the design considerations so you know why we're using each type of turbine and what you like to use the turbine. Here I would like to interrupt. The first and the third we have studied so far, the Pelton and Kaplan. Uh, here they are also discussing the Francis type of turbine. So we are comparing three. From exam point of view, you can just focus the first and the third. Francis turbine is the most common. It was 
designed in the mid-1800s by James B. Francis. The Pelton turbine was again designed in the mid-1800s, this time by Lester Pelton. It has by far the most distinctive appearance or shape of all the turbines. And the final turbine is a Kaplan turbine, which was designed by Victor Kaplan at the start of the 1900s. The Kaplan turbine looks more or less like a propeller. Less common types of turbines would include the Darius turbine. Darius turbine was designed in the 1900s by Paul Darius, or Darius, depending on how you pronounce it. But this is not considered one of the main three types of turbines. This is not in the main group of turbines. You're much more likely to see the Francis, Delton, or Kaplan turbine than you are the Darius turbine. Another sub turbine would be the cross flow turbine, but again, this does not belong to the main three. Hydroelectric turbines are classified into two main categories as either reaction or impulse type turbines. Reaction type turbines are pressure turbines. They have a continuous body of water, an unbroken body of water from the suction side or from the upper reservoir all the way down to the lower reservoir. The water body is unbroken. These are pressure type turbines. And the reaction turbine functions because as the water flows through the runner, there's a pressure difference between the suction and discharge side, and this pressure difference causes the runner to rotate. So that's the reaction turbine. Just remember reaction pressure type turbine. Impulse turbines are pressureless type turbines. They work by shooting a jet of water at the runner. What they actually do is they direct the jet tangentially into a bucket this causes the runner to rotate. So remember, impulse turbines, no pressure, and also the body of water is broken. We're taking it from the suction side, we're then shooting it at the runner, and this causes the runner to rotate. The water is then just drained away. The reaction turbines, the whole process is a lot less dramatic. The water just flows through, and the pressure difference causes the runner to rotate. Two different categories, and the only two categories that you're going to see. I should mention at this point that the runner is a part of the hydroelectric turbine that converts the kinetic energy to mechanical energy. So the runner is going to have different shapes. It could be a Pelton runner, a Francis runner, a Derriere's runner, or a Kaplan type runner. Just thought I'd better explain that there because there's a lot of terminology that people throw around. And for me personally, I find it confusing and I actually have a rough idea what I'm talking about. I can understand if people get slightly confused. Anyway, let's carry on. Hydroelectric turbines are also classified by not just their design or operating conditions, but also by the head. Low head would be, for example, up to 30 meters, so 0 to 30 meters. Medium head would be 30 to approximately 300 meters, and a high head would be anything above approximately 300 meters. You can also classify turbines by their orientation, if they're vertical or horizontal, and by the shape of the water passage through the turbine. So, we've discussed a little bit about each type of hydro turbine, or the main types of hydro turbine, and we also know that they fall into two broad categories, such as impulse and reaction. Now we're going to look at why you have the different designs and when you'll use them. So the graph in front of us says hydro turbine design in the title. On the left-hand side, we've got head of pressure going from zero up to 2,000, and on the lower scale here, on the x-axis, we've got the flow, which is in meters cubed per second. So we'll start at the bottom. We can see here we've got a horizontally orientated Kaplan runner. Now this would be installed, for example, for a bulb turbine. So I'll just refer to it as a bulb turbine. We can see that it's on the lower end of the scale for head of pressure. It's going from about 5 up to 25. See, the scale starts on 5 because you actually need some head of pressure in order to get some flow. I mentioned earlier in the video are from 0 to, for example, 1,000 meters, but obviously at 0, there's no flow. You really need to start at, say, 5 just to get some movement or a decent amount of water flowing through the turbine. So this bulb turbine would operate on a range of, say, from 5 meters of head up to about 30 meters of head. We can see that on the lower scale, it needs a flow of a minimum of one meters cubed per second up to a maximum of about 200 meters cubed per second. So when are we gonna use this type of runner? We basically need a very high flow rate, but we don't have a large 
head of pressure. So it would make sense to use this for a run of the river power station. If we've got a river, we could easily dam it slightly, create this 10 meters height drop. This means we have 10 meters of head, and this would be enough for our bulb turbine. The river, if it has a very high flow rate, and a lot of rivers do, then that's ideal for our bulb turbine. That's exactly what we want. We want a high flow rate, but we also want a relatively low head of pressure. And we're going to get that when we install the bulb turbine in the middle of a river, for example. Another good application for a bulb turbine is for tidal power generation. The tides are only going to rise by, let's say, for example, between 5 and 10 or 5 and 15 meters per day, and then it's going to flow back out again. So you'll have a high tide and a low tide, but there is a lot of water in the ocean. That means you're going to have a very, very high flow rate. The water is rushing in twice a day and rushing out twice a day. And if you've got a head of, say, 10 meters, that's more than enough for this bulb turbine function. And that's the exact conditions that the bulb turbine wants. If we go a little bit higher up the food chain here, or a little bit higher up the graph, should I say, we've got a vertically orientated Kaplan turbine. Now, notice that this guy can operate to a much higher head of pressure. He's up here and around about there. I would like to interrupt here. So this is a very good uh, comparison. They have plotted for the heads and the discharges and where that turbine falls into that graph they have shown you. So in the field you may have some already known parameters of discharge or the head. So in such case it will be very easy for you to choose which type of turbine you can go for. Okay. 80 meters at a pressure range or maximum, and the flow rate, you can do very, very high flow rates, up to a thousand meters cubed per second. Remember, this is not, uh, you are not expected to know this in detail for your exam, but you can just make a note of it, so that in your practical life, when, if you uh, end up doing this uh, uh, job, and this plot will be very easy for you to understand. Or even for your masters in hydraulics, you may need this. Okay, but not for your exam. So the vertically orientated Kaplan turbine covers this entire section here. And what's not shown very well in the graph, but it also comes down to the base here, so between one and two meters cube per second. So you're going to have a very large number of applications where you can use the vertically orientated Kaplan turbine. So it crosses into the green area, the red area, and it has a lot of its own area here on the right-hand side. Remember, the medium head of pressure range is from about 30 to 300. So this guy's sitting comfortably in the middle, although he's also covering the lower head of pressure ranges, all the way down to five. So that's a vertically orientated Kaplan turbine. It goes slightly higher now. You can now see a new type of hydro turbine runner. It's this one here. This one is a Francis runner. Of all the turbines, the Francis turbine has the widest range of applications. We can see that clearly on the graph here. The red area goes all the way down to a head of pressure of about 18, all the way up to a head of pressure of about 750. And you can see on the flow rate that it can cover almost the entire graph from left to right. Flow rate here of less than one meter cube per second, all the way up to a thousand meters cube per second and beyond. So this is a very versatile turbine. The Francis turbine is the one that you are most likely to see. It's the most common turbine in the world. And that's simply because it can operate across such a wide range of pressures and flow rates. The Francis turbine is also what I dub the secret turbine. The secret turbine has two functions, or it can have two functions. If you have a radial flow Francis turbine, you can also use it to pump water. So it's got two functions, or it can have two functions by design. That means if you're taking water out of an upper reservoir to a lower reservoir, and it's passing through the Francis turbine, you can generate electricity. But where the secret turbine comes in is that maybe you have too much electricity in the grid, and you want to use some of that electricity to pump the water back up. And to do this, you'll normally use a radial flow or a Francis type runner or a Francis type turbine. It'll pump the water up. Let's say, for example, it costs 
one cent per kilowatt hour to pump the water up, and then they'll let the water back down when it costs five cents per kilowatt hour. So they're making money. They're pumping the water up when the electricity is cheap. Remember, they need electricity to drive the runner and pump the water up the hill, back up to the upper reservoir. But then they've done. So here we have a new insight on this uh, Francis type of turbine, as you see. So this can be also used as the pump sometimes. So what they do is like when your electricity demand is less, so the excess uh, in, in uh, electricity you have, you use the same uh, energy to pump that water back again to the reservoir. So let's say what they're talking about in cents is, for example, to pump it back, you will take one rupee. And when it again flows and generates, you will get five rupees. So in short, you are earning four rupees profit. All that when the electricity was cheap, expensive, and they can prefer. And we'll move up now to our final hydroelectric runner type, and that is the Pelton turbine. Zoom in and get a good view of it. Pelton turbine, very distinctive shape. And this is used for high heads of pressure applications. It's right up here in the top left. Generally, you're going to see Pelton turbines when you have a very high head of pressure and a low flow rate. Pelton turbine, because it can operate efficiently at such a high head of pressure and low or relatively low flow rates, it's an ideal candidate for when you have a very high upper reservoir and a very low lower reservoir. This means there's a very large head of pressure or a difference in height between the lower reservoir and the upper reservoir. If all design considerations have been done correctly and you've got a Francis type or a propeller type turbine operating at maximum efficiency, you should get an efficiency rating of about 0.93 for the maximum. Anyway, I hope that tells you a little bit about the three main types of hydroelectric turbine. And you should also understand now why the designs are so different and why they have such distinctive and different appearances. If you've got any questions or comments about the video, Pelton, Francis, and so again, we'll see this last video now. It's like a short video for two to three minutes, and again we'll try to differentiate between these three type of turbines. Now let's see what they have to say. Kaplan are the most commonly used hydraulic turbines. In this video, we will compare these three turbines and see when to use which turbine. When we move from Pelton to Kaplan, the force producing mechanism changes from impulse to reaction. In Pelton, pure impulse force of water jet is responsible for rotation of impeller. Water stored at high altitude can produce high impulse force due to its high velocity. So Pelton turbine are suitable for operation when water energy is available at high head and low flow rate. So, after showing you some these multiple videos, I'm expecting you that uh, this should go deep into your mind and tomorrow there won't be any confusion regarding the type of turbines and what applications they have in the field, okay? So, I can understand this uh, unit is very small for you. But uh, seen like over a period of time, students tend to forget this application. At least for your uh, campus interviews, you should know which type of turbine is used for under what head and how it's work it works. Even if you know this detail of this is more than enough. The formula is efficiency part is altogether a, a different subject here. But this basic understanding is very important for you. Whereas Kaplan turbine is suitable for the reverse case. A high water flow will guarantee efficient production of reaction force. So when water is available at high flow rate and low head, Kaplan turbine is the best choice. Francis turbine comes in between for medium head to medium flow rate applications.
Francis turbine is not a pure reaction turbine. A portion of force comes from impulse action also. This graph gives a clear idea about when to use which turbine, depending upon available waterhead and flow rate. It is obvious that Francis turbine covers a wide range of operating conditions, or they can work efficiently in wide range of operating conditions. This is why Francis turbine is the most preferred hydraulic turbine. If you use a turbine out of its recommended operating range, it will work, but less efficiently. It is also interesting to note the direction of fluid flow with respect to axis of rotation in each case. So with this we stop here. In the next class we will uh, try to discuss about the cavitation in detail. It's a very interesting topic. Unfortunately very less attention has been given in this uh, in our syllabus because of the uh, vast range and other important uh, parameters we have in civil engineering but this cavitation is very important and i find a lot of interest in this cavitation how it is developed so it has got to do with the vapor pressure negative pressure vacuum pressure so if possible you try to read more about this cavitation part and so that it will be helpful for us in understanding the next class. So with this we stop. Thank you.